Hi. Now in this video what I want to do is I want to introduce you to drawing box and whisker plots or some people call them just simply box plots for a particular set of observations. And what I'm going to show you is how we can draw the basic plot without outliers and then including outliers. I'll show you what outliers are and we'll also talk about the different types of skewness you can get. So first of all, what is a box plot? Well, generally it's a diagram that would look something like this. What we do is we take a set of data and we find out the quartiles. The first quartile, often called the lower quartile, the second quartile, often called the median, and the third quartile, often called the upper quartile. And we draw up a scale on say a piece of graph paper as we'll do in a moment and we plot here the lowest of the observations and here would be the highest of these observations and would mark on as I say the lower quartile, median and upper quartile. And the object of a diagram like this it gives us a visual interpretation of the spread of data. So let's just get started with this set here then. Now in order to draw a box plot for this set of data what we need to do is look at the lowest value which is 4 and the highest value which is 30. So we need a scale on here that at least covers from 4 to 30 and it would strike me that we just need to go 0, 5, 10, 15 and so on up through here like this. So that would be a suitable scale. Now, what is our lowest value? Well it's clearly the 4 so we'd need to mark it in like this with a little dash. So if we go to 4 on this we're going to have a mark something like that for the 4. And the highest observation, well that's 30, so we'll go along here to 30 and just mark that in. And what about the quartiles now, Q1, Q2 and Q3? I'm assuming that you're familiar with working out the quartiles. If not, just go on the website and have a look at the tutorials for locating the lower quartile, upper quartile and median for discrete data. Now. What we've got here though is 11 values, so to find the position of the median all we need to do is add 1 to those 11 values, that would be 12, and divide by 2, so it's 6, the 6th value in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that gives us 15. And so the median, or Q2, is going to be at 15. So that means that on this scale there's 15, so we'll draw that line down there for the 15. Now the lower quartile. To get that, what we've got here is five values to the left of the median. So if we were to add one on to that, that's 6, divide by 2 is 3. It's the third value in, 1, 2, 3. This one here, the 12. So we need to mark in Q1 at 12. Okay. Now we need to look at Q3, the upper quartile. We've got five values on this side. So it's going to be 5 add 1 is 6, divide by 2, 3. Third value in on this side. So clearly that is the 19. Mark on 19 then for the upper quartile and that will be down here. So to complete the plot we need to just draw a rectangle round here and we draw what are called the whiskers, hence the name box and whisker plot. Okay, These are the whiskers. So this is your basic box and whisker diagram. Now before we go on to part two, drawing the box and whisker plot showing outliers, I want to talk to you about something called skewness. Now when you draw a box and whisker plot 
it might look something like this, where you've got an equal or relatively equal width here as you have here. And both your whiskers look to be the same length. If that's the case, we say that the distribution is roughly symmetrical. But that's not going to always be the case when you draw box and whisker plots. I mean, it's not really the case with this one. Can you see that this whisker here tends to be a little longer than this one? And this width in here is it's a bit wider than this block in here. So we have something called skewness. So when you draw your box plots, they might look something like this, where this side seems to be spread out more than this side. Or you might get something like this one, the opposite effect. Now when you have these types of diagrams, we have two types of skewness. And the first one is what we call positive skew. It's when Q3 minus Q2, that's this width in here, is greater than the width Q2 minus Q1. Positive skew. And similarly, when we've got something like this, we have negative skew. This is where Q2 minus Q1, that's this width here, is greater than Q3 minus Q2, this width here. And what kind of diagrams would you have had before that give rise to this kind of skewness? Well, you can get positive skew through a frequency diagram, something like this. And the corresponding cumulative frequency diagram would look something like this, very slow on this section here to ascend. Okay, And you can see we've got the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile drawn on. And when we have negative skew here, the diagrams that would be associated with that would look something like this. And this part here is called the tail of the distribution. And in this sense, the tail is pointing more in the positive sense. So that gives you also another way of remembering positive skew. And this tail is pointing towards the negative direction. So hence negative skew. Now if we look at the type of skewness we've got on this particular box plot, you can see quite visually that it's positive skew. But sometimes we haven't got box plots drawn, we've just got the raw data. And so therefore it might be worthwhile then, if you're asked to find the skewness or discuss the skewness, just to work out what Q3 minus Q2 is and compare it to Q2 minus Q1. We'll just do it here, just so that we've got a calculation. So Q3 would be 19, take away Q2 which would be the 15. And if we do 19 take away 15, clearly we've got 4. So this is 4 units width, as you can see anyway, just by looking at the squares. And when it comes to doing this block here, this is Q2 minus Q1, which in other words is going to be 15 take away 12. 15 take away 12, which is clearly 3. And you can see the three squares in there. So Q3 minus Q2, this width is clearly greater than this one. Okay, so we've got positive skew. Now for the second part, we've got to draw a box and whisker plot showing the outliers. So what do we mean by outliers? Well, these are extreme values out towards the ends of our distribution. In fact, they're defined as values that are one and a half times the interquartile range that are above the upper quartile or below the lower quartile. As a formula, we work out the lower extreme values, the lower outliers, by Q1 minus one and a half times the interquartile range, that's Q3 minus Q1, 
or the ones above, out in this direction, above Q3, will be Q3 plus one and a half times the interquartile range. So if we're to work out the lower one here, so we'll just put here outliers. So for this lower one, we've got Q1 minus one and a half times the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1. And so numerically, that becomes the sum 12 for the lower quartile minus one and a half times then Q3 minus Q1, 19 minus 12. And that gives us 4.5. So we have 4.5 as the kind of lower boundary. And this value of 4 is much lower than 4.5. So this value of 4 is an outlier. And you mark in outliers with a cross. So we'll put 4 here as an outlier. And the next outlier that we're going to look for will be ones up at this end towards the right of the distribution. And that means we've got to use this formula, which is Q3 plus one and a half times the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1. So again, if we do this sum, Q3 being the 19 plus one and a half times the interquartile range, 19 minus 12. And if you do that, you'll find you get 26.5. So have we got anything greater than 26.5? Well, not the 26, but the 30 is. So 30 is an outlier. Now to finish off the box plot, what we need to do is find our smallest value. But we don't take the extreme value here. We take the next one up, which is 8. So we go to 8, and that will be here. And that becomes now our smallest value within the extreme values. Similarly, what's the highest value between the extreme values? Well, it's the 26. So we need to mark in 26 as being our highest value. As for the median, which we know is 15, and the lower quartile, which we know is 12, and the upper quartile, which is 19, these are all going to remain exactly the same. So we just join this up, complete the box plot. Our whiskers are a little bit smaller than what they were before, but we have our extreme values put in. Now, don't expect all box plots to have extreme values. Sometimes you might have one or more on one side and none on another. It just depends on what your calculations come out to be. And don't always be expected to plot these outliers in. Okay, It depends on the question if they ask you. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea then on how to draw box and whisker plots. And that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.